Welcome into the Chris Collinsworth podcast featuring Richard Sherman, the great one, and presented by our good friends at DraftKings and DraftKings Sportsbook app. You can use promo code PFF to get $100 in free bets if the NBA team of your choice hits a single three-point shot. So they've got to make one. <laughs> okay, I think I can win that bet. A uh, hundred bucks basically given to you for just playing along. Today on the show, we have a tremendous show. Um, this is a special request from me because I think that this young man, uh, Caleb Farley, from uh, cornerback from Virginia Tech, in many ways is going to be the next freakish Tyreek Hill, um, Deion Sanders kind of type that we're talking about a lot on Sunday Night Football and everywhere around the National Football League. Uh, he has some fantastic stories to tell about his speed. I won't steal the thunder of those, but pretty entertaining stuff. Um, and, of course, he had to pick the brain of Richard Sherman. And so this was an unusual show that we did. We kind of had to chop this one up a little bit. Uh, Richard had to drop his kids off at school. He was doing the uh, podcast from a cell phone in his car. And, but for Caleb, it was a fantastic opportunity for him to have some fun with Richard as well. So I want to remind everybody before we get started here to go to pff.com and get your PFF NFL draft guide. This thing is absolutely the best in the business. I dare anybody to argue that. Uh, we've got a few hot rumors going around that it's also sitting in those NFL draft rooms as well. And it should be. Uh, the draft guide comes with the PFF Edge subscription, which is just 40 bucks for an entire year and gives you access to all PFF's premium content and draft analysis and fantasy rankings and tools and all that stuff. And if you want to play for free with PFF Mock Draft Simulator, which is my favorite thing to do, this thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, you can predict the draft for hours and hours and hours. Uh, you can uh, also check it out at pff.com slash mock. And now here we go with our buddy, Richard Sherman. All right, back with uh, King Richard once again here. And uh, I'm excited about this show. We've got a young man by the name of Caleb Farley, who is a freakish athlete. Now, every once in a while, you put on the tape and you go, Oh, man. Now, he doesn't necessarily know everything, and he's been through some back surgery, and he's got issues. But every once in a while, you see a guy on tape, and all you can think is, how fast is that guy? Right, right. I mean, he, he he's rolling. And like we talked about before, I mean, speed can be uh, – I mean, in this game, speed is everything. And if you got it, you got it. And if you don't, you wish you had it. And he has it. And so that'll that'll give him a chance. But I think mentality is going to be a big, big thing for him. And obviously the injury is going to going to put teams, you know, in question mode. But um, I think he's a great player. You know, it just, you know, what 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 do teams think and what are they medical departments? What is what did the MRI, what did the X-ray say? And that'll be the big, big questions. Well, another big question is going on right beside that Golden Gate Bridge out there in san francisco do we have any feel yet for what's going to happen because honestly i could see this draft and this is not completely outlandish going if mac jones goes three right let's just say that he does that he goes to san francisco three you could have a draft that goes one two three four five with quarterbacks what you is? could see atlanta <laughs> trade out of there you could see cincinnati trade out of there it is possible we go first five picks quarterback in this draft. That would be the first. That'd be, that, that would have Absolutely, it would be the first. I don't think they've ever had four. <clears throat> wow. I mean, I could see that happening either way. I could see that happening even if Justin Fields is three. If Justin Fields is three and, and, and the New, New England trades up and um, Cincinnati trades out, I still think he can go one, two, three, four, five. But I just – I think – like we said before, I still think that Justin Fields is a pick. You know, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't think Kyle and John ever show their hand. And I think speculation. I, I mean, I've never seen speculation to the point that that it is right now. I mean, this is this is a feverish pitch of speculation. It's just ridiculous. And then everybody's – then it's almost like a smoke screen because every mock has Mac Jones. And it's like, come on now, you guys. Not, not every single – every single mock has Mac Jones. Um, but – 
it's interesting. It's a, it's going to be interesting, and it's going to be – San Francisco is going to pretty much control the draft and control what everybody else does because once they – you know, everything kind of dominoes off what they do. Yeah, and, and Justin Fields, Trey Lance sitting out there, they're going to do their second pro day coming up here for – basically for <laughs> San Francisco. I never thought that much of the fact that they went to Alabama's – um pro day first because there's so many athletes on that team right you you almost couldn't miss that one to go look at those other two quarterbacks so it really didn't surprise me so much that they that they did that I mean is there anything to read into that at all no no I mean you got Alabama if even if they're not scouting for this year they're scouting for next year you know it's just like going to Ohio State's and Clemson's like you don't miss those you know and and but I think I think they're getting there they're getting their reads of these quarterbacks and they, they it's not like they they didn't get to watch the film. I think they had to go to all three. And I think the second pro day is going to be one where they, it would have been a private workout any other time. Um, but this year it has to be a, it has to be a, a pro day too, I guess is what they're calling it. Um, and I think they're going to, they're going to have them run through more specific stuff. It's just all in a public eye this time. All right, you have direct connects to all these people. I've got one last one. Then we're going to go off to Caleb Farley. Any chance there's little rumors out there that Justin Fields could go two to the Jets, and that flips everything again. Any chance that that happens? I mean, I I'm just dying to see. And obviously, both the both the uh, uh, the Jets are going to run that same Shanahan offense. I'm dying to see him, Justin Fields, go run that style of offense and come out on the edge like a friggin' runaway freight train. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I don't think that's much chance. I don't think I don't think I think people are pretty enamored with Zach Wilson to New York, and I mean that'd be a freaking, I mean that that freaking blow everybody's mind if that wasn't true uh, after all this. But I think he's going to be great either way. Um, I, I'd like to see it as well. I'd like to see him make the reads, throw throw the bang posts um, right off the, the the seventh step. I'd like to see him um, to deal with the options. I'd like to see him with the RPOs in addition to everything else that Kyle does. Uh, I mean, he'd be he'd be as exciting as anyone has ever been in this offense. You know, RG three was was obviously incredibly dynamic in his rookie year. Um, but after the injuries, you know, it kind of kind of tapered off. But um, Kyle, Kyle has shown that guys can be special. All right, speaking special. of special, let's go off and meet this young man now, Caleb Farley. <laughs> and I know uh, he's somebody you're you're intrigued by this cornerback class. But I really feel like Richard, this is the swing guy. This is the guy that I have. He if he went in with the first pick as a, any defensive player, it wouldn't stun me. If he lasted till the third round, it wouldn't stun me because of the back surgeries and such. But he is going to be fun to have a conversation with. You ready for this? I am. I am totally ready, and I'm excited. I'm sure he's going to feel away about you know me picking J.C. Horn number one in the class. But you know we'll we'll deal with that. Cross that bridge when we get there. All right, here we go with uh, one of the most exciting and intriguing picks in this year's draft, Caleb Farley. All right, here we go with, um, I think, the most intriguing draft choice in this year's draft. And I know we're going to talk a ton about the quarterbacks, and you know, you're going to be worn out talking about all those guys anyway. But remember this name, Caleb Farley out of Virginia Tech, 6'2", 207 pounds. And he's a young man that had back surgery. Uh, and the reason I relate to that a little bit, my son, who was the captain at Notre Dame playing safety, had a similar back surgery. I actually had the same exact back surgery. And we were talking a little bit, Caleb, off the air about, you know, what you're going through. But this was, so the last tape that we saw on you was 2019. And most people agree that if you had come out in 2019, you're probably the number two overall pick behind a cooter, right? Is that kind of what you were hearing a little bit? Uh, you know, uh, at, no, I, I didn't even really think about coming out um, in, in 2019 because, you know, I, I was so 
down the radar at the time. You know, I was planning on coming around for my junior year and, um, you know, getting better that off season. You know, I knew how much better I could get um, and kind of fully putting my stamp on, you know, the top corner spot. Uh, but, you know, things work out how they work out and uh, you got to be grateful for, you know, your situation either way. All right. Well, let me t- let me wrap it up in a nutshell for somebody who has no idea about who you are. This is one of the fastest human beings I've ever seen on a football field. I, now, that's no lie. I mean, I'm, I've seen Dion. I've seen, you know, all the guys that you want to, Tyreek, all those guys. When you hit the Jets, it is startling to watch. And I heard a story, I want you to tell me if it's true or not, that you actually used to lie about your 40 time because nobody would believe that you really ran four two something. So you just said, yeah, I run four, three, five or whatever. Yeah. I used to do that all through my <laughs> early college careers, all through my senior year of high school. Uh, to tell you the truth, I still do that to this day um, because, you know, uh, I didn't get to prove nothing handheld at my pro day. And if I would have ran something handheld at my pro day, it would have went down as myth, you know, not factual. So it's still something I kind of do to this day. Like, it's, it's just been a humbling experience, you know, not being able to do pro day or go to the combine on that national stage uh, because, you know, I truly had eyes to, you know, break, set, set the record or break it. Um, and even the video, you know, I got released, um, you know, of me training, you know, that was one of my slower times. That's just, that's just what we had to use because we had the video. <laughs> so and, and it's what was that time? What, what was the time that, that you put on the video? It was 428. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, this was back before – you know, a peak out phase, we were still pretty much in strengthening, you know, of the legs. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's grateful, but yeah, I, I can go, I can run with, with the best of them. I mean, so just to put it in perspective, I, so I'm, I'm watching a lot of your tape and there were times when, you know, a guy would get you or it'd be a double move mm-hmm. or it would be something, you know, and I'm like, well, he's dead. And all of a sudden, here it comes. I mean, five yards behind and with a, a college wide receiver who obviously can run, and you just track them down. I mean, what, watching your tape against the uh, University of Miami in particular, a couple of picks, right? There were some plays that went against you too. It wasn't completely perfect. But it was, it was one of those tapes when you see against a first-class group of athletes, which Miami is always going to have. Does that game in some ways stick out to you as, as being that, hey, I got this? When I think about that game, you know, I always think about the, the pass I gave up from biting in too much inside leverage. I, I think know about the, the, drop, the little corner the route to the back of the end zone, to the to the right side, right? He just That's went right against your leverage. About, um, I always think about the drop interception. Um, I think about I think about that that uh, the lousy uh, pi call that I got caught on myself from not turning soon enough. I feel like I could have turned into him and, and caught me a fourth one. Um, I, I I think about I think about the ball that got knocked down, uh, <laughs> uh, the ball that got tipped at the line of scrimmage when I was in cover two and I was about to jump that that second out route. Uh, I, I think about all those plays, you know, that, that got left on the field when I think of games like that. I, I hate to tell you this, but that feeling doesn't go away. I am, <laughs> I I'm 62 years old now. I can remember maybe a couple of touchdowns or big plays that I had. I can remember every drop. I can remember every mistake. I can remember every yeah. fumble. I can remember every negative thing that I ever did in my career and barely remember the other stuff because you expect your whole life you've been the best athlete, right? No matter where you went, no matter what Correct. you did, you were the best athlete. And so you Correct. just expect to have success. You don't anticipate that anything bad is ever going to happen. So when it does, it's like it's so ingrained in your mind that you can never get rid of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, just a, a drive to be as perfect as possible, uh, you know, to come off the – I want to come out of the games and have 100% on my on my grade and sheet. And, and you know, I think I can get there. I really, I really think I can get there. I, and I always believe that. Well, what people may not know about you, and, and I, I just want people to understand that because of your back surgery and because of the questions about your back, and we haven't mm-hmm. seen you play for a while, 
you could have gone, let's say you didn't have the surgery. You would have been very much up for debate to be the first defensive player off the board, in my opinion. Now, I think that may be pick 10 and the Dallas Cowboys before we, we see that. But very much you would have been in that discussion. Now, because of the back surgery, because of the unknown, and people don't want to spend a first-round draft pick uh, on somebody that conceivably could never play in the National Football League. You know, I mean, let's face it. We've all heard horror stories about back injuries. So give us an update because I've heard everything on you. I've heard from 10 to second round to I'm not drafting this guy. He's off the board. Give me some idea of what's going on with you. Uh, well, what's going on with me personally is, you know, uh, I, I'm now in a in a state where, you know, I've done all the competitive talk. Um, you know, I've, I've pretty much let everyone know on paper how I feel about my, my skill set and, um, you know, and my confidence about me playing this season. So I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not really – here to talk myself up anymore. Um, you know, I'm, I'm here to get, get to work in my rehab and, and get ready to, you know, ha have a, a dominant rookie season, um, uh, which I will, because I've put in a lot of work since the 2019 season. And, um, you know, if, if somebody uh, is looking at my 2019 season and saying we haven't seen him play since he since he fixed his, his problems, you know, I played that 2019 season hurt, um, you know, in discomfort. So, uh, just to be moving around and to be able to work out and and and, and to be um comf and be comfortable doing it, um you know the, the, the sky's the limit for me. Um you know I, I intend to ballistically attack my core the rest of my career and um stay on top of my body uh, and make sure that you know that I'm I'm at a top level and so I'm I'm truly excited. You know it's not it's not me to hype myself up no more for the team that want the, for the team that want, wants me. You know, I want them to, to make a wise decision, a decision that, that looks at the value and, and can see past what they might call, you know, as a little risk. Because at the end of the day, time, time will tell. And, um, you know, the team that picks me, I'm going I'm to do everything I said I'm going to do for them. All right, let, let, me, let me be the bad guy for a minute. Let me represent all the team's owners and all those guys who are scared to death to draft you because you're coming out of back surgery. So you had the back surgery when? like three weeks or two and a half weeks ago two and a half the weeks. 23rd of march there you go 23rd of march so what are you able to do now can you run can you lift can you what can you do I, I i would be able to do i would be able to run and do all of that but i'm not supposed to like i feel like i like i said i woke up out of the hospital and walked out you know i'm in los angeles two days later i fly back to blacksburg for a pro day walking around talking to teams doing the getting on the scale getting measurements like i i feel great i feel great but it's it's about being smart and 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 letting your letting everything heal letting and then like you said strengthening your 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 core back up and then and then starting to build your body back up sprinting and running and uh, jumping uh, but every elite doctor I, i've talked to you know without a doubt they said you know i will return to play where i was um so I think it's, I think it's really, you know, if, you know, some people are more cautious than others, you know, some people opted out of the COVID season and some people played through it. So teams are going to be more cautious than others. Uh, but, you know, the team that, that, that takes that decision with me, I'm going to make them look like geniuses. So uh, when my son came out of the surgery way too soon, he went right back to deadlifting and hurt himself again. So, See, I will um, never do a deadlift again. <laughs> thank you very much. I just want to make sure that, that I've communicated that no way in your lifetime do I want you ever doing that one again. But have they laid out a schedule for you? In other words, when you can start to lift, when you can start to run, when you can start to do all this stuff, and how does that coincide with training camp? Are you going to be able to make the start of training camp? Yeah, without a doubt in my mind, I feel like I'm going to be ready for the training camp, uh, suited up. And just knowing how my past surgery went um, to fix the upper level, and which, you know, the whole time I was feeling the lower level, but still able to perform. Like, I don't know, I don't know why, but the levels that was affected with me, you know, I was still able to perform. It just was the, it was the, it was discomfort or not. It was, it was, it was discomfort or not. Like, 
Um, so without a doubt in my head, you know, I'm, I'm ready for training camp. And right now I'm on my core program. And when I pass, you know, as I pass these levels, uh, that's how I know to, to, to rank it up or, or to ramp it up and, you know, to start going more aggressive. Uh, but I actually want to, you know, see where I go um, and see if, if I'm able to, you know, come into the facility early and, you know, work, work, work and rehab there or if I need to go back to like Exos or something, something like that. So I'm, I'm just doing my core right now. I'm still trying to put the pieces together, how, to, how what the future is going to hold. So the other thing that people may not know about you is that you were a high school quarterback, right? Yeah, played quarterback my whole life, middle school, high school. Which is a huge advantage for playing defensive back or wide receiver. So I was a quarterback through college and then moved to wide receiver in college. But what I knew about what the quarterback was thinking was such an advantage for me, I felt like, in my career did you have some of that same feeling playing quarterback? Because your numbers are like ridiculous, like third all time yards uh, in your state. I, 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 let me see, I got the numbers here. Uh, 2,574 yards rushing, 37 touchdowns, 21 passing, 58 total all time touchdowns, third in Carolina history. That's Those are pretty impressive numbers for a quarterback. So you're still a baby playing defensive back you've only done this a couple of years uh yeah but i i think that speaks volumes um being able to get thrown into the fire um um you know start every game as a as a freshman and to be able to turn around in one off season and you know um actually knowing what to work on you know now and then in one off season being able to play at, at an elite you know corner level in college you know i think that speaks volumes and that's one of the reasons why i wanted to come back my junior year and I, I spent that offseason working so hard, you know, and, I, and I've gotten a lot so much better, you know, at, at my coverage skills, my technique. Um, and and I'm just excited to get back on the field and, and show all of these things because, you know, I kind of feel all my life I've been underrated. So I kind of feel like I'm back in that position. Like I'm, I'm back. I'm, I'm back in the position of, you know, um, getting overlooked or, or slept on or, you know, um, so. And I, I, I just love it. Everything about it, I love it. Hey, chip on your shoulder works for a lot of guys. Don't let, don't worry about having a little chip on your shoulder. Absolutely. Um, tell me, tell me a little bit about the process for you. I mean, we're we don't have the combine anymore. We, it's all these pro days. It's all this stuff, and and now you can't do it. But I'm sure everybody. Do you just take like? one physical do one set of MRIs and send it to everybody what's going on because teams are going to want like almost a weekly update on you and your health at this point uh yeah so uh pretty much the only MRIs that I've, I've taken that go to the teams are was at Indy this medical combine um here here recently and uh you know I it went it went well I got great feedback uh, I actually was planning on, you know, if, if teams requested it, you know, I'll take MRIs all the way up to the draft. You know, it's gonna show it's gonna show what I'm what I'm what what the doctors are saying that you know that I'm I'm on my way to a full recovery. Uh um if you know, I, I wish I could go out there and work out. <laughs> uh but you know, I, I, I can't. So it's at like I said, at this point there's no there's no there's no more it's it's not time for me to continue to say, Oh, I'm the best corner. I'm I'm this I'm that I'm I'm a bad man I'm a ab I'm I don't even want to do that no more you know um if you don't know that you will know that so I just I'm just here to enjoy the process from here on out and and see how it falls. When's the last time you lost a race to somebody? Man, I probably was like pre pre adolescence, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I wasn't strong yet. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, it's, it's so funny to talk to people that can do things like you can do that physically can run like you can run, whether it's Tyreek Hill or, or Dion or, or whatever. And it is, I, I usually ask the same question, which is when did you know that you were different than the other kids? When did you know that like, how come these guys can't catch me when we're playing tag? How come, was, was there like a moment that you go, I'm just Absolutely. different? Absolutely. Uh, you know, this this is a true story too. I was in a kindergarten 
Uh, I was in kindergarten at South Newton Elementary School, right down the road, right down the road. And uh, it was a fifth grader at our school, you know, real popular, real athletic. He ended up going on to that, our, that high school and being a great varsity football running back, you know, just real popular. So I actually, you know how we had field day at the end of, at the end of class and everything. So I actually raced him. You know, he's supposed to be the fastest in the school. I'm in kindergarten, man. I'm like five, six, six years old. <laughs> and, and all the teachers out there, you know, all the second, third, fourth graders out there. And I beat him. I took my shoes off and, bar- and barely beat him. But I'm talking about he's fifth grader. Like, he, he's, he's grown, like, way bigger than me. Just, But I beat him just quick-footed. Just, after that, after that, man, I've been the man. <laughs> that is I've been unbelievable. Man after that. Kindergarten. Kindergarten. Wow. And, and when you watch the receivers in this game now, I, let's just start right at the top. Let's let's go right to Tyreek. You watch yeah. him play. I, I don't know if you saw the first game that he played against Tampa. Obviously, they did a better job against them in the Super Bowl. But the first game that Tyreek played against Tampa in Tampa, I, I mean, he had like 220 yards in the first quarter or some ridiculous thing. I've never seen anything like it. He's on pace for 800 yards in the game. Um, I, when you look at a guy like that, does it make you go, oh, boy, that'd be a heck of a matchup? Or I'd like to race that dude, man. I think I can get him. It, may, it makes me smile. Uh, you know, I've seen uh, Florida's coach talking about Kyle Pitts saying, you know, it takes a unicorn to cover a unicorn. I'm sorry, I lost you there. But I've seen uh, the Florida coach saying, uh, yeah, it takes a unicorn to cover a unicorn. Uh, and I thought that was, you know, funny. Uh, but when I see stuff like that, um, it, it just makes me want to work hard and, um, you know, be great because they're, they're setting the standards so high of like, you know, you can't just go out there and, and not be on your game um, or you, you're going to get exploited. Um, so, but I also think a lot of DBs, you know, are scared, are scared of him. You know, ain't nobody's going to line up and press coverage and, and still be in their fundamentals and technique and balance on the balls of their feet. No, as soon as the snap of the ball, they're going to get on their heels. They're, they're scared of him. And it's a lot of guys, it's a lot of guys that's scared of it too. You know, I, I wouldn't be scared of I wouldn't be scared of it in press coverage. Um, you know, I would I would play him honest. All right, we'll be right back to Caleb in just a minute. First, we head to DraftKings and the DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, take advantage of the NBA playoff push. Use promo code PFF, and you get the chance to bet one dollar on any NBA team to make a three pointer. And that's all you got to do. They have to make one three pointer, and if you win, you get a hundred bucks of where the free bets. Why would you not? Just in time, of course, for the uh, draft props coming up in the National Football League and the NFL win totals and all this stuff is told to me by George and Eric, who are all over it. George, break it down, brother. I, I will just say that um, we've, we've made some significant investments recently, okay? Investments. Uh, I am not. I refuse. And maybe you can get something from Richard here as far as the secrecy of the San Francisco 49ers. But I refuse to believe that anyone knows anything. Not Peter King, not Adam Schefter. The only, I don't even think Kyle Shanahan's wife has a clue who the 49ers are taking. And so therefore, just, let's just say this. Justin Fields was plus 250 on this hollowed sports book. Bet 100 to win 250. Eric and I talked about it in the podcast. We then made, put our money where our mouth is. We, he drove to Indiana to start our, what we call a syndicate betting the Justin Fields prop. It's already down. People are already listening. So you got to get in when you can get in. He's like, you know, down to like plus 175 now. So, you know, you got to make it happen. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if people have the, you know, the, the gumption to do it because there's so much Mac Jones love out there, but go watch Justin Fields play football. I, you don't have to argue with me. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm all in. I, matter of fact, I think he could go two to the Jets still. Yeah. I, I look, it, we, we could talk about this for days, but you should go put your money where your mouth is as well at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the promo code PFF. As Chris said, bet a dollar, win $100 of free bets if a team makes a three-pointer and then go put it on Justin 
fields. There's also some good win totals. PFF.com, we've got a win totals tracker. We've got all the bets we're placing on there. Go check that out. You must be 21 or older for this DraftKings promo. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania only. New customers are the ones that are eligible. Restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Mr. Disclaimer, very nicely done. All right, here we go. Back to Caleb Farley and his visit with Richard Sherman. I've got a guy now on the screen reporting live from his car overlooking the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, there go the man right there. And there you go. He would not be afraid of Tyreek. And uh, Richard, this guy is something else. We've covered the health. We've covered the uh, the injuries. We've covered the 4-2 and how you used to have to lie about it. The last story was the best one, though. When he was in kindergarten... He lined up against the fastest kid in the elementary school in fifth grade and beat him barefoot. So there you go. You have some Ooh, idea now of what you're dealing foot? with here. Beat That's him like barefoot. like a little legend back here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, competitor, don't matter what age. R- Richard, the one thing that uh, you guys have in common, you were receiver in college, and he came out of high school with this freakish – Scored the third most touchdowns in Carolina history coming out of high school. Runs obviously like to win. But the idea of taking your knowledge of an from an offensive standpoint and applying it now on defense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's everything I just talked about. It's, it's, the, it's that and the mentality to get the ball. You know, obviously you got your you got your hands on um, a number of footballs, but that's that's what the game's about. And it's about understanding what they can do. I haven't met a receiver yet that calls plays. And until I do, I won't be worried about what they got going. You know, obviously, if I'm impressed and I'm in man and I know we got a big-time man week, then I'm going to study the, the release package. I'm going to study um, my leverage and things he does well and, and you know, old-school splits and things of that nature. But um, a lot of times it just comes down to, to, to understanding the, the entirety of the field. And if you played offense and you, you understand the playbook and you understand – you know, hey man, I got to feel comfortable doing this. I got to get this spot to get a, to get my to get a go route going, to get a post. I got to get this release. Um, then it really makes it easier for you to understand um, as a defensive back where you need to be. That's Caleb, awesome. the the one thing you don't know is that uh, Richard, after his playing days, is going to be directly to being a general manager on his way to being president of the team, on his way to being an owner, on his way to being the commissioner of of the the National Football League. But as a GM, Richard, now you're sitting there, and I I was playing a little devil advocate with him, a devil's advocate with him a little bit before. But after the surgeries, now you're a little bit of, okay, there are other DBs in this class that are healthy. You don't got me number one. Huh? You're taking offense to that. You don't got me number one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's all good though I, I don't hold it against you I know you were thinking man I, I, I understand I don't hold it against you with him. I appreciate that it's, I appreciate that you know it's um you know that's that's why I love the process because you know uh man I truly I'm truly living my dreams right now and um, at the end of the day you know I'm gonna have my opportunity so that's all that's all I can ask for you know um you know, I just continue to work and prepare for the season doing a lot of studying you know what, what we was just talking about so you know, uh, you know, get some guys' hands, and I know at the end of the day I'm taken care of, and um, and you know I can ball. So I'm just excited to get back in that element. Honestly, honestly, it's gonna end up working out better, best for you. I promise you that. Um, because and that's what a lot of people don't realize. People are like, man, I just want to get picked the highest. No, really, you just want to go to the best situation. Like yep. the highest ain't the best situation always. Some sometimes you 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 know, no offense to Cincinnati, but sometimes you you end up like, man, I want to go to highest, and you end up in a spot where you can't thrive. You know, you don't have any veterans. You're not, it's not a great D coordinator. And then your career kind of derails and you don't know what, why you're like, man, I just want to go to highest. And you went to highest, but you went to the wrong team, the wrong scheme. Absolutely. You know, you didn't have any veterans. Like you're going to go to the right team with, with a veteran to, to, to be able to teach you the, to, the game, to be able to, you know what I mean? School you and you, you're going to start still, you know what I mean? But it's going to be a better situation for you to learn the game, for you to be on a competitive team. The earlier you get picked, the less competitive the team was, obviously. You know, obviously, the <laughs> earlier you get picked, the, the worse the team was. You know, you, you're sitting there like, man, I hate going 25, but you're probably going to a team that was in the playoffs and going back to the playoffs. 
and and it's really going to be ready to to continue to contend and to treat you like the player that you know you are. Sometimes these the, the teams that aren't as good are aren't good for a reason, you know. And there's you know history behind that. But I think it'll work out great for you. And I think you got the right mentality and the right attitude that that a hey, it's in God's hand and it's going to work out fantastic. Absolutely. So why does it have to be Cincinnati? You could have picked out any team. Why is it got to be Cincinnati? Seriously, what's up with that? My, my bad, Chris. I mean, just first thing that came to mind. Uh, there you go. This is it's such an intriguing opportunity to to talk with you because so many of these draft choices, you know, I watch the tape and you study the background and you look at the numbers and you look at the stats. But you never get to know the guy. And, and Richard, I think you would agree with this. Like, the people you bring in that locker room, uh, like, that would mean more to me than a 40-time or anything else because they got to fit in there. And you're going to have enough headaches as a general manager no matter what you do. There are going to be problems. There are a bunch of young kids, and, and there are going to be problems. But what would really matter to me was – how that guy was going to fit and could he be a part of some championship run here? Um, I, I don't know, Richard, how you feel about it, but obviously Caleb, a good guy and enjoying getting a chance to visit here. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge part of it. And that's a huge part of championship culture is, is having people that, that fit it, you know, people that, that, that have humility and, and people that understand that it, uh, it, it's got, it's going to be bigger than you to win championship. You know, it's going to take, 53 guys working together. And I think sometimes guys come in with the wrong mentality and like, oh man, it's me. You know, I'm the guy, I'm the man. And it's like, you never win like that. You never win. You might be the man for a little while, but it's the team sport. This ain't track, this ain't tennis. You know, this is a, this is a 11 men on the field working together towards a common goal. And if anybody out there is selfish, it's not gonna work out. It's gonna be a, a kink in the armor and it's, and it's gonna break down. And I think that's why what you're saying is important because having having that personality and being able to show just the way you're talking, that your personality traits are showing right now, I can understand how you're going to fit into a locker room, how you're going to fit into a team, and how when somebody tells you, like, hey, man, we got to do this and hold you accountable, it's not going to be offensive. You know, it's not going to be like, like man, oh, you want to fight? Like, nobody wants to fight. Everybody just wants to feed their family, you know? People just want, want to see you do well, want to see them do well so we all can eat. And I think some guys come in and they're like, man, no, I know everything. You know, I'm the man. You know what I mean? They draft me this high. It's like, well, this dude been in nine years. You know what I mean? He might know a thing or two. And I think having that mentality allows you to, to, to grow faster and to have success early. Caleb, let me let me run down a couple of names here. I don't know how well you know these guys now. Do you know the other corners in this class? I know them, fair. I know. I mean, I don't really have, you know, a strong relationship with all of them. I've met, I've met most of them and, you know, got to talk. I know them. Let, let, let me just throw out a name and just give me off the top of your head what you'd say about the guy. It, it could be football related, not football related. I don't care. I, I don't care. I just want to hear you. You know these guys, Patrick Sertain from Alabama. Like a technical, like product playing the corner. His dad was was a D. Like he been playing his whole life in training. He like like a prodigy. Like very technical. He's just sharp. Very sharp. Yeah, that's a, that's the one I said. If I had to say which one was most like Richard playing the game, that that's what I would have said. I would have said him too. J.C. Horn from South Carolina. Joe Horn's yeah. son, right? He used to play receiver for the Saints and all that. Oh, great athlete. Um, very physical, you know, run support. Um, like he coming down like Jay Ramsey. Um, you know, just a dog. I, I'm going to go with that one, too. How about – this is one that I've just been studying recently here, uh, but looks like a good player to me. This is Greg Newsom out of Northwestern. He, he's he's not flashy. He doesn't do anything like – like when you put on your tape, you go, wow, you know, like just wow. There are different wow plays that happen. And Newsom's just kind of smooth and comfortable and never really out of position. Tell me what you know about him. Uh, I don't know. I don't know a lot of. I don't know a lot about him uh, other than you know I seen him on a couple um, things coming from Northwestern, but I never really um, took the time to go go watch and look. And and finally, one more for me: Asante Samuel Jr., another guy whose dad played in the, in the league. 
plays at Florida State. A little smaller guy, but a little feisty. What do you know about him? It, exactly like you just said. If I, I think he's aggressive. I think he, um, you know, he, he plays aggressive. He plays like a true, like, corner, like, mentality, like DB. Um, um, yeah, and he goes for the ball. It, it's going to so be – Go ahead, Richard. I had a question. I, I I just had a question, and I don't know if you guys addressed it. And if you had something that you said, man, I need to work on this part of my game. Like that's that's the part of my game that I'm I'm the least comfortable with. What part of your game is that? Uh, yeah, truly, like I feel like I've worked on so much. I, I think it would be continuing to get experience to be able to show it. You know, I feel like I feel like to get the parts of my game that I've that I've improved on and understand now here. And I've kind of, you know, grown into the – like, I feel like I just got to get on the field and show it because, you know, I truly know I, I can pretty much do everything a corner is asking to do, asked to do and, and do it well. And, you know, I, and I have the tools to do it do it well. Did, did you ever so, return kicks? Did you ever return punts or kickoffs? I, I used to beg. I used to beg. I'm talking about every day. I used to beg to return punts, and I never, I never get to go to practice and catch catch those punts. I'd always be doing punt or like running a gunner, or 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 doing something like that. Uh, I did kick kick return uh, my freshman year. I ain't really like that though. I like the open space. If I can get the bar in open space, you know, I, I do that better than I play corner. And, and, and talk talk to me a little bit about tackling. So everybody has a few missed tackles along the way, right? So that's all part of it. But for an offensive player coming over to play defense, like there's no doubt that you are willing to put your body on the line. I, I've watched it. You, you're now technique wise, there may be a miss or two, you know, a wrap your arm, whatever the hell it is. But from that standpoint, how much of that is still a learning process for you? It was, well, that was that was the biggest learning process from, you know, from offense to defense, you know, um, covering guys. Yeah, I got better at that, you know, with time. But that that wasn't really um, that big of an adjustment. It was learning angles and learning body position and leverage. You know, my fresh my freshman year, I had like 13 missed tackles and then cut it down to four my sophomore year. and Two was in the first game against Boston College. So but I can remember coming to games and trying to visualize it. And not even knowing what to visualize because, you know, I had never done it before. I had never been put in a situation. Um, you know, I used to think leaving my feet used to create a bigger impact, which, you know, is obviously wrong. But, you know, it, it took the it took the it, it took the experience, you know, and actually having to do it to, to be the only teacher to actually have to track somebody's near hip and take a good angle where they can't just cut back on you or or, you know, put you in a bag, not giving them your chest, you know, keeping your leverage, staying on your feet. Things like that is, is all, you know, things that, um, you know, I had to get comfortable with and learn them. And, and for your question, yeah, my first first preseason game, I'm looking for all contact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first preseason game, I'm looking for the sideline. Um, <laughs> you, you know, but, Richard, what was probably yeah. the most interesting thing for me watching him and I, I wrote it down in my notes is cocky speed. And I don't mean to insult you in any way, but I, I was like, okay, if he stands inside a guy in bump coverage, right? Just take away the take away the inside release. Please go outside on me. Please. And then you just watch him jog beside the receiver. I mean, it's not like there there's not the slightest fear in his heart that somebody's just gonna take off and outrun him. So now you're taking away half the field with your your bump position with the inside stuff, and now you're taking away the deep go because you can run faster. Now you just have to worry about all the, you know, whatever the, the outside breaking in kind of stuff. But there's a lot of advantages to what he can do because he's a big guy, so he can handle the press inside. He can let them run to the outside and make a play, makes good plays on the ball with his offensive background. There's a lot of really intriguing stuff going on with Caleb. Yeah, I can, I, I can see that. and But I think everything he said today is what's going to make it most special because all that leaves eventually. Like all that deteriorates. Speed goes, uh, athleticism goes. But the way he's thinking the game now, it seems like you're more mentally in tune with understanding how the game works and how you can dominate from that. 
Like you dominate the game with your head, your body will take care of the rest. And if you, your body's already doing everything it, it, it can do, I mean, you're fast as you can be, you can jump as high, you can do anything you can do, you'll put yourself in easy positions to make plays on the ball. And, you know, then they'll talk about you, you know, going over the water and getting pro bowls and getting gold jackets and all that cool stuff. You know, so it's all about, it's, you have the right approach. And, I, and, I, and I'm really enjoying this conversation because I enjoy hearing that. You rarely hear that from guys um, that are younger. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Caleb, <laughs> Caleb, all right, here we go. I'm going to flip the, the script on you here. I'm going to let you ask Richard three questions. And because now here, here's the chance to, to tap into the master. Now you do the interview. Here we go. All right. Uh, off for, off for uh, press. 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 I got to press. Uh, I mean, I can play off you know, play with vision and all that, but I feel like press gives me an opportunity to, to be in control early and get, get all the reads I need early on and be in a dominant, especially on fade balls. If I can get in control position on a nine ball, it don't really matter how fast you are. Okay, so I've seen you, I've seen you, I've seen you flip the shoulders, look back and catch the picks on the nine ball. But how fast, so let's say if I'm coming into practice, I'm coming into the game and I get a guy outside release. Okay, he's not coming back in on the slant. And I got him. I'm comfortable. I'm right here running with him. Comfortable. When do I go ahead and put and, and turn into him and look for the ball? Because don't they aren't isn't back shoulder supposed to be crazy in the NFL? Yeah, they they are, but it's a, it's honestly a feel thing. <clears throat> it's a feel thing. If you if you comfortable, then your then your brain isn't panicked. You know what I mean? Like you know when you're in a position where you like uncomfortable and you like everything is an indicator. You're like ah. Ah, he did this, and now you twitchy. But when you're comfortable, it's like, mm, that's not it. That's not it. So a lot yeah. of the back shoulders you can feel. You know, these receivers are getting better at late hands and stuff like that. But when you're in their body, they got to look for the ball. They got to turn and put their body in position to catch it, and you'll feel that. Like, and I, it, it, you know what I mean, you know, I when know you're that. in tune. Yeah. And outside of that, I feel like once I'm past 15, 16 yards, and usually you can feel that from playing wide out, that's when I feel like I need to get my shoulder in front of his shoulder and get in control. And then I look, I don't look until I got control of it because these yeah. boys can, can slip by and blaze by you. And next thing you know, he, you know, Odell is five yards ahead of you and you just look back for the ball and it's over with. So when I get my shoulder in front of his, I'm in control position. He can't go by me. Then I look to see if I can locate it. I ride that red line until the Q QB let the ball go. And then I go get it. Got you. Uh, so, um, uh... You when you're playing off, I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing zone, some type of zone or things like that. Are you looking at your man or are you looking at the quarterback? <laughs> I'm rarely ever looking at my man, uh, honestly, uh, unless we in man, and I'm really playing off if we man. <laughs> so, but um, <laughs> but 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 it's back to the to the concepts that I was I was telling you about. Like I'm getting the full picture. So so gotcha. if I'm two by two, and number two, like starts to run across the field on the special. I know from just experience of, of playing these damn offenses that number one's coming in. It's either a dig or a post. It's one or the other. <clears throat> and so I don't need to look at him to know that. Now, once I get the info for two, I'll glance at one just to make sure I'm confirmed. You know what I mean? Now, I ain't, I ain't a fool. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not about to just, you know, just presume. But once he gives me that break, that outside breaking foot to break in, I mean, that outside foot to break in, then I'm driving. And it could be a it could be a dig and go. It could be max protect, you know. But usually quarterbacks don't got that kind of time. And usually you'll feel that. Usually they they not gonna double move you on the first one. And now after I drive that first one and I put that on on tape and I put that on the 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 photos, then I know I'm gonna be more cautious driving it because I know the dig and go can come. But I really think it's coming on the first one. All right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And my last question. When you was coming out of Stanford, and I'm, I'm sure you feel with confidence and, you know, getting ready to follow your dream, same same position I'm in, how long or it, or if not, there wasn't a wait, did it take you to be on the field at the next level and be thinking like, man, like, I'm I'm really, I'm really him. I'm really, like, the best. Honestly, honestly, it, I, I don't know if I thought I was the best, but I thought I could play. I thought I, I, thought I, I was more comfortable playing in the league than I was in college. Wow. Like, I felt way better in the league. Like, I felt more like I belonged in college. I was always nervous. I was like, like, even when I made plays, it was like, like, I was still like. <sighs> I like, should. I, I, right. 
And so when I got to the league, I didn't, I started the sixth game of the season. So I was special teams for the first four. Then one of our corners got injured. So the fifth game, I would come in in nickel situation. So I was the, I was the third corner. So when we were in nickel, I was out there on the edge and I played, I played okay. I played pretty well. We played Victor Cruz and, and we played, uh, the Cleveland Browns and they didn't really have anybody, but I felt good. I was tackling well. I, the moment wasn't too big and I really felt like I was in my zone. Like I was like, damn, like, I'm having a good time out here. And then we played A.J. Green. And that was my first start, the sixth game of the season. We played A.J. And A.J. kind of tuned me up. He kind of he kind of hyped me up because he was in my class. He got drafted uh, fifth, fifth, fifth or sixth that year. Uh-huh. And so he came out talking big, like talking cash. And when he started doing that, like I'm a competitor. Like, you know, no matter what, dudes start talking to you. He started hitting a part of me that didn't have nothing to do with the game. So then I start getting so hyped that I wasn't even nervous about the game no more. I'm like, I'm just about to abuse him. I don't give a damn about none of this. And it allowed me to play so free. And I had a pick. I almost had a second pick, and I tipped that to somebody else. They got a pick. And at, at, during that game, I was just like, man, like, if this is the league, I'm built for this. Yeah. <laughs> I can do this. And yeah. I think a lot of it had to do with, like, coming up, obviously working hard. But I had a good veteran. I had I, I understood, like, the concepts of what I was getting. And then – it was like own the nine ball, own, own the nine ball. If you own the nine ball in this league, you're going to play for a long time. I got you. I plan to own the nine ball. Yes, man. sir. Yes, sir. I- Caleb, how good was that, man? After this, me and you, we, 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 I'm going to give you my number and we're going we're gonna to chop, chop it up. That's, that's big time. We're locked in. Caleb, how, how good was that? Seriously. I mean, that, that, man, you, you should have to pay $100,000. Your whole signing bonus should have to go for that education <laughs> right there. <laughs> no. Save your money. That's crazy. Oh yeah, I got another question. Is that is a, is a rookie dinner um for real? <laughs> it depends where you go. And you going first day? What would be sure. what would be like some some like indicators of like maybe I shouldn't go to this dinner? <laughs> oh, it, you should not go. That that be that be you be causing yourself more issues not going than you would just going to the dinner. <laughs> like, uh-huh. like if the if the question is should I or should I not, you should because okay. it, like throughout the year, like you do a little shit, they gonna be testing you. I mean, usually they are gonna be like, hey, just grab my pass, do, do this just to just to see how you gonna be. And the harder you are on, like, nah, you ain't gonna disrespect me. I ain't gonna grab. The harder your life gonna be later on. Just understand that. All right, that is good stuff. Caleb, we uh, wish you nothing but the very best. Uh, really appreciate you coming on. I, 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 I had to meet you. I had to know who you were, what's going on, because uh, Richard, I just feel like he's that swing guy that somebody's going to take a chance on, and they're going to be scared to death with the pick, and they're going to hope it's in the second round. And he could end up a Hall of Famer. He could end up injured. You know, he is one of those guys that is the swing pick in this draft. And he's going to end up going to, like, Buffalo or somewhere where he's going to be in a perfect scheme, perfect system, and play for 10 years and have 50 picks. It's going to be great. Hey, man, and it's, it's not no risk to pick me. Tell him. It's, tell him. Tell him. They listening. Not, it's not no risk, risk to pick me. <laughs> I, I, they know. There you go. Take there, me a receiver. There you go. <laughs> there you you go. say you gonna go play both? <laughs> I'm just saying, if I, <laughs> it's not no risk to put me on a roster. I I, right. I need him on Sunday night for the opener, man. I I just I I am so curious to watch what he can do in this league. I just literally can't wait to watch it. So, Caleb, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Uh, really enjoyed getting to know you a little bit. And can't wait for draft night. But more importantly, and I think Richard's right, doesn't matter. You know, I was in the second round. Richard was in the fourth round. Doesn't matter. You just come out, and eventually they got to put you on the field and give you a chance, and that's go time then. I know. Thank you. I appreciate you guys, truly. All right, thanks to Caleb and Richard for making it out of the parking lot. Next week, we have a really special treat as a guest. I guess you're not going to want to miss, and I promise you that. If you thought John Gruden was great, and he was, you ain't seen nothing yet. 
So make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Give us a nice little review so we can keep the PFF doors open around here, pay a few salaries. That would be great. But uh, make sure you stay tuned next week. Very special guest right here on the Chris Collinsworth and Richard Sherman Show.